Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and how do you do? Welcome to this week's virtual story time with me, Miss Kayla. This week's theme is all about nighttime. So I had thought about this one for a while. I really wanted to do nocturnal animals uh, and realized I wouldn't have enough stuff or enough books more specifically. But then when I went digging for books about night, I was very surprised to find that there were a few out there. So my theme this week is nighttime. So there are some nocturnal animals in there and other things that you would see or do at night. And that's that. So I will start with a book today. <clears throat> And this one is The Night Gardener, and it's by the Fan Brothers. And it was published by Simon and Schuster Books for Young Readers. So let's see what the Night Gardener is up to. William looked out his window to find a commotion on the street. He quickly dressed, ran downstairs, and raced out the doors to discover the wise owl had appeared overnight as if by magic. William spent the whole day staring at it in wonder. And he continued to stare until it became too dark to see. That night he went to sleep with a sense of excitement. The following morning, William was not disappointed. Each day, William discovered a new topiary Next was a friendly rabbit, followed by a pretty parakeet. And then a playful elephant. With each new sculpture, the crowds grew and grew. Something was happening on Grimlock Lane, something good. The next day, William dashed out of his home and followed the crowds only to find the most magnificent masterpiece yet. Festivities continued long after the sun had set. As William was about to head home, he spotted someone unfamiliar. Could it be? The gentleman turned to William. There are so many trees in this park. I could use a little help. It was the night gardener. Under the light of the of full moon, they worked deep into the night. William awoke to the sound of happy families walking by and a gift from the night gardener. The whole town had come out to admire the night gardeners and Williams' hard work. Over time, the leaves changed. And then fell until there was no evidence that the night gardener had ever been to Grimlock Lane. But the people of the small town were never the same.
and neither was William. The end. So for my felt story this week, I was inspired by the book um, called Papa, please get me, uh, please get the moon for me, and it's by Eric Carl. So this is the story about Monica. That's Monica. And one night before going to bed, she looked out at her window and saw the moon. She thought it was so beautiful, and she wanted to play with it. So she reached as high as she could, but she could not get the moon. So then she asked her father, Papa, please get the moon for me. I would really like to play with it. So he reached as high as he could. He even put Monica on her shoulders and together they reached for the moon, but they couldn't reach it. But then her father had a great idea. He got the longest ladder and put it on top of the highest mountain. And he climbed all the way up, 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 all the way to the moon. Once he got there, he realized the moon was way too big. But the moon said, if you wait over time, I will get smaller and smaller. And then when I'm just the right size, you can come get me. So her, Monica's father climbed back down and it was true. The moon got smaller and smaller smaller until there was just a tiny sliver in the sky. So Monica's father climbed back up, 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 all the way again and grabbed the moon. And he gave it to Monica to play with. She was so excited. She loved the moon. She cuddled with it, she gave it hugs, she tossed it in the air, but then she noticed that the moon was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and then it disappeared. One night she was looking back up at the sky before bedtime and she saw something. It was a tiny sliver of the moon and every night the moon grew and grew and grew some more. The end. Next up, I have Night Animals. And this is by Gianna Marino. And it's published by Viking. So, Night Animals. Hey, Possum! What are you doing in there? I'm hiding. Um, what are we hiding from? Night animals. Now keep quiet. Oh, can, can you move over here? Let's find somewhere else. Uh, 
Did you hear something? Are you trying to scare me? Help me. Help you. You're a wolf. But something is following me. What is it? It's big and hairy uh, with long sharp claws. You guys gotta help me. Something huge is coming. What can be bigger than a bear? Why is the sky getting darker? Night animal, run, hide. Stop. What are you so scared of? We're scared of night animals. Um, but you are night animals. Oh. Did you hear something? Everybody run, 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 run. Hoo, hoo, hoo. The end. Oh yes, for our craft this week. I think this is the best craft that we've done since the beginning, or that my boys enjoyed the most. We've, they really, really, really like this. This is one I brought in, but we, we made another one at home as well. So super easy. You grab a Ziploc bag, and then you draw on it with markers. I strongly suggest permanent markers if you trust your children with them, because the washable markers don't quite dry as fast and don't stay on. So. And then you put a black piece of construction paper in the back. So my kids had me draw a bat that doesn't look like a bat and an owl that doesn't look like an owl, but they did clouds and the moon and stars and rain. And then, this is where the magic happens, you make a little flashlight. And that you just use normal paper. I didn't even use a stencil, I just did it. And then you put it in. Whoa. And you can go find with your flashlight all the fun stuff that you guys drew. See, that's my owl and that's my bat. And that was it. The rest I left up to the boys. So they did bushes and then there's, like I said, a moon up there. And then they kept adding and adding. So then we did other ones with different scenes. We did an underwater one. We did one with food and you could find food. So anyways, this was a big, big, big hit with my kids. And this was our nighttime craft. So my last book for today is Night Train, Night Train by Robert Burley and Wendell Miner. And it was published by Charles Bridge. Night Train, Night Train. Train ride, bump, bump, chug, chug, slow, faster, faster, off we go. Long train snaking through the night, dim, gray, nowhere light.
Night train, night train, hold on tight train. Peak, black, nose to glass, watch the colors as we pass. Clang, clang, ding, ding, town ahead. Gate down, blink, blink, hello red. Night train, night train, go left, go right train. A barn, a house against the sky, big blue window like an eye. White star twinkling far away, make a wish, can't stop, can't stay. Night train, night train, wish I might train. Mountain tunnel, darker dark, wheels on iron, orange spark. Highway billboard, neon sign, purple arrow, shimmer, shine. Night train, night train, what's next in sight train? Bridge, click clack, river flow, green light, water, way below. Round, yellow, Mr. Moon. Watching, whispering, be there soon. Night train, night train, beam of light train. Eyelids flutter, nod, lean back, rattle, rumble, down the track. Dream colors, shadows, light, riding onward through the night. Night train, night train, into morning bright train. The end. So that is everything that I have about nighttime this week. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week with a brand new theme. Bye everybody.